really know yourself and look at your patterns and realize who needs to stay in your life and who needs to leave, especially when they're taking away your power. And don't give your power away to anyone because that's what makes you amazing. Welcome to yourbrilliance.com. I'm your host, Amy Waterman. Have you ever felt like a lot of dating advice just doesn't apply to you? You know, it's all addressed towards white middle-class Americans, which is weird because that definitely doesn't describe everybody. There's Asians, there's African Americans, there's Hispanics. Where's the dating advice that's culturally relevant to their experience? Well, thankfully, there is one woman daring to break the mold. Her name is Sujeri Gonzalez, and she's on a mission to bring Chica power to love. She's written for Latina.com, NBC Latino, and Cosmopolitan. She has written a book called Love Trips, a collection of relationship stumbles, and you may have heard her voice on the radio or on her podcast, Love Sujeri. She's a born and bred New Yorker, a storyteller, and a newly single mom who shares her personal stories of love and heartbreak, while helping women along the way. Welcome, Suheri. Thank you, thank you. That was such a great introduction. You made me feel so good about myself. <laughs> well, we just have to look at your social media empire. We're talking YouTube, we're talking podcasts, mm -hmm. we're talking Instagram, and you have the most wonderful tagline. I love it. It's real stories, no shame. No shame, all things love. So tell yes. me about that. Why did you, why did you pick that? I chose that tagline because I was specifically speaking to a Latina audience and most Hispanic women, Latina women are raised to not talk about love and sex and dating and to not share our heartbreak and what we're really going through in our relationships because you don't want anyone to, you know, know your business and, oh, then so-and-so is going to gossip about you. And it's this facade of perfection and everything. It's fine. It's the Catholic guilt. It's everything. So I wanted to create a brand and a platform, especially with that tagline for women of color and Latina specifically, where they can come and talk and engage with me about everything. And I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to shame them. It's a safe space for you to really open up in a way that you've never been able to do before because you were taught that it's not okay. And what I love is that you role model that for your audience. You talk a lot about your personal experience. You recently came out on YouTube to say that you are ended an important relationship and you're a single mom at 40. How do you think all those experiences help you address women's concerns? Well, I think that you practice what you preach, right? If I'm expecting women to speak up and share their experiences and shed the shame of communicating about love and sex, then I have to do the same thing. So it makes me more approachable, more relatable. And I've had women throughout my entire career contact me through email, social media, saying, your podcast really helped me. I went through the same experience you did and I had no one to talk to. You kept me sane during a breakup. Or, you know, I have issues with abandonment as well and no one has talked in my family. I, I can't talk with anybody about it. My friends don't understand. And it's amazing to connect with a Latina, even though I don't know you, that has experienced that and is openly talking about it. So it, it makes me more relatable and, and my audience connects with me in a way that, especially the Latina audience, that they haven't been able to do with anybody before because there isn't another Latina doing it the way I'm doing it. There's a lot of coaches but I'm not a coach, you know? I'm here to just really tell my story and help other Latinas tell their story and other women as well. I'm not, you know, I don't limit it to just Latina women. Well, what's wonderful about that is that so much, so much of the dating advice landscape is white and, yeah. and so much of it is American as well. Mm -hmm. And so to get stories that are from a unique cultural perspective, you know, as you talked about, you've got Catholic guilt, you've got uh, a lot of cultural expectations. What do you yes. think are some of the things that Latinas deal with that, you know, all the white dating coaches really can't address? Well, I think family for us is super important. So there's this thing called el que dirán, which is what they will say. That's the translation. So we are expected to be like perfect little good girls. And that continues into womanhood, right? You have to be a good daughter. You have to make sure that you can cook, that you can clean, that you can take care of your man. But then you're also supposed to be this like independent woman that's like sending fam money back to your family, wherever the country, or like helping your mom financially. 
And then you're supposed to be the sex bot because you're Latina and you're like, oh, cha-cha-cha. So it's like, there's so much, there's so many roles that we have to fill, especially if you're American Latina, because I was born in New York City. My, all my cousins were born in New York City. A lot of my friends were born in the United States, but they're still caught in between the two worlds of like being American and like wanting to date outside your race and, you know, bringing someone darker because there's a lot of colorism in um, a lot of Latino households, like wanting to bring someone darker or like dating a black man and bringing them home. And is anyone gonna, like Latinas experience that too because of the colorism because there's a lot of racism within the culture because of the darker skin lighter lighter skin so there's just so many different roles that latinas play that i feel like white women may play it to an extent but when it comes to the family responsibility you know especially when you're first generation having to really be responsible for like your mother maybe your grandmother who still lives in the motherland you being usually the first person who graduated college who had you know who has a career that's not like a factory job it's a lot of pressure to uphold and then you throw in relationships and the type of man you're supposed to bring right (laughs) and you're supposed to have babies young and and it's just a lot of expectation um and a little bit too much for i feel like a lot of latinas to handle we're trying to pave our own way and create our own identity in it especially when it comes to sex because as much as we're supposed to be sex pots and like sofia vergara cha-cha-cha you know, we're also supposed to be good girls. So there's a lot of, there's an oxymoron in like what it is to be Latina and dating. Even with men, I feel like a lot of like white men or men who aren't Latino, they're expecting a certain type of personality because of what they see in the media. And then we're supposed to either fill that role or we don't fill that role. It's like, we have to kind of convince them like, no, this is, this is not all Latinas are like this, I swear. So tell (laughs) me some of that. Tell me some of your stories about how you've gone off in the dating world and people have judged you or stereotyped you or thought, well, you must be a certain way because you're Latina. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one that comes to mind is, you know, I went to prep school. I went to Phyllis Academy Andover in Massachusetts, which is like Andover is like the rival school of Exeter, which is where like Mark Zuckerberg went. So a lot of people just assume that because I'm Latina and a lot of men I've dated that aren't Latino, right? And from Washington Heights, which is a neighborhood in Manhattan that's predominantly Dominican. I don't live there now, but that's where I grew up. That like I'm from, you know, the hood or that I wouldn't, you went to prep school and that maybe I, you know, like that my parents came on a boat like no my mom came here legally like she actually had a visa so there's just a lot of misconceptions or that I eat tacos and like them I'm Dominican I don't like tacos like that's a Mexican thing (laughs) and tacos actually aren't a Mexican food it's like a Mexican American food it's not something that people in Mexico really eat on a regular basis so just a lot of generalizations because of what they see in the media of what being Latino is and I think also the fact that there's so many different cultures in Latin America and the Caribbean, you know, people automatically, I remember I went on a date when I lived in LA for a year with this guy and, you know, he was like, where's the Dominican Republic? Some people don't even know where I, my parents came from because they're not worldly and they just assume Latinos are Puerto Rican or Mexican, you know? So I think there's a lot of having to teach on a date that you don't really, or like people, they just want to start talking Spanish with you. Hola, chica. I'm like, I speak English. You don't need to. That's not cute. It's, it's not cute. So I think a lot of, a lot of Latinas experience, experience that when, especially when they're dating white men, I think. Um, one thing that a lot of, I think, um, Afro-Latinas, which is Latinas that have more African roots, have talked to me that they've experienced is like the hair thing. Like they want to touch their hair. Their hair is like a little bit more curlier or a little bit like tighter with curls. And it, there's just rules and, and, things you just don't do culturally. Um, and one of them is don't touch the hair. Like you have your hair done, like don't come. Or if like your hair is super curly or maybe a little bit kinkier, like no, don't try to comb it out. <laughs> like I put, I set my hair on rollers and I don't like going out in the rain because my hair is naturally curly and it's like, yeah, I need an umbrella even if it's drizzling. <laughs> so, so there's a ton of emotional labor. Yes. That you put in. So I have to ask you then, is it just easier to date somebody who understands your culture rather than trying to date outside the culture? I I think it's easier, but it doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do because I think that easy sometimes isn't challenging and what's familiar 
usually is what's comfortable. And I believe that in order to grow, especially in relationships with self-awareness, with self-love, that we need to be a little uncomfortable. So I've been in relationships predominantly with Latino men, but I have dated outside my race. But my ex actually is Vietnamese and Puerto Rican, but he was raised to be very Vietnamese. So even though I was someone who was half Latino, there was a lot of nuances and cultural um, just traditions that he didn't understand. Like the rain umbrella thing, he would be like, it's fine, it's just drizzling, you don't need an umbrella. Hello, I'm Dominican and my hair gets curly, I blow dry this, no, I need an umbrella, it's gonna frizz, you know? <laughs> but he didn't understand that and would make such a big deal. Why is you, why well, is such a big deal, it's fine. But there's like Dominicans or like there's like some women that are not gonna go out in the rain without an umbrella. <laughs> and it's like, no, I'm not going anywhere without an umbrella. And he didn't understand what the big deal was. And even family traditions, like Latinos traditionally usually are really close the families are really close my ex doesn't have that type of family dynamic like i talk to my mother at least three times a day to some cultures that's extreme that's very common in the latino culture to the american culture that's very extreme my ex was raised very american and he was raised more asian and they don't have that like the same attachment you know so i i was confronted with a lot of like huh Huh? And I had to learn like, okay, not everyone's going to be like me and it's okay to compromise and like maybe not talk to my mom three times a day. Maybe I can talk to her twice a day so I can talk to my partner instead. So I want to ask you if there's any dating advice that you have heard people give out is like, this is true and this is true for everyone at all times in every way. And you've thought, actually, that advice is so wrong for my community, my culture, the people I know, uh, uh, doesn't work. I think one general piece of advice that I always hear relationship experts give, and it's not even a culture thing. It's just like really just generalized advice is if somebody breaks up with you, then it's over and you, and you move on. Like if, yeah. if a relationship is over, then it's over. Like there's no need to take them back, but that's not always the case. I actually know a lot of women and have met a lot of women who they met someone in high school, it didn't work out, and then later in life they got together and that's like the love of their life. Or they, you know, broke up because it wasn't the right time, timing wise, and then later on they reconnected or they got married and then got divorced and then found each other again. So I feel like that's one generalized, like not every situation is the same. Not every breakup is for the same reason. Just because you broke up with someone, it doesn't mean that they treated you badly or that there wasn't love there. Sometimes it's just bad timing. I think another generalized piece of advice that I hear all the time is don't have sex on the first date. Yeah. And I was one of those people that used to give that piece of advice. <laughs> Because I didn't think that men would respect women, but that's a lot of, that's a crock of S. I'm, I'm not, I don't know if I can curse, but that's a crock of BS. Because men, especially now in this day and age, if a man likes you, he doesn't care if you sleep with him the first 20 minutes, the first 24 hours, or you make him wait three months. So that's a generalized piece of advice that I feel like it's very old school. Like, oh no, if you have to court, he has to court you. You have to make him wait because then he's not going to respect you, but you can make him wait and the relationship not work out anyway. Fantastic. So it doesn't, the time you have sex, it, it should be when you're comfortable and when you want it. Not when society or someone's telling you to, to have sex with someone. So I one of the things I yeah. love about your work is that you are very open about the fact that you have made mistakes and you've done some yes. crazy things. And a lot of them, those stories you collect in your book, Love Trips. Tell us yes. about that. So my book, Love Trips, um, is a labor of love because I really started writing it in 2006. I started from an old relationship. And the book is basically a collection of personal stories. It's chronological. So it does follow a storyline. And it's about my heartbreaks, my relationships, my, not all of them, but I have a lot of my really major relationships that have shaped me. And a lot of the relationships that have shaped me have really helped me zone in on like my self-worth issues and my, my really my abandonment issues because of, you know, my, my childhood with my father not being in my life for a big chunk of my life. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of like pleading and wanting a man to love me because I didn't have that self-love and the stories are funny. It's a little bit, um, some of them are really shocking because things happen and it's like, I can't, is this, 
is this real life? Like, this, this really happened to you? Like, major, like, soap opera type of stuff, right? <laughs> and then, and, but in the end, it really is a message about how important it is to love yourself and walk away from something when the person you're with isn't really giving you what you need. Um, and I don't have my last relationship in the book because I'm going to write a new book since that's such a huge part of my life. He was, he's the father of my child. He was my fiance. We were together five years. So I feel like that deserves like a whole nother book. <laughs> that is fantastic. And you also have your podcast, Love Sukiri, mm -hmm. where you talk to lots of people. There's a lot of real funny stories in that one too. Yes. My podcast is called Love Suhaiti and it's on Spotify iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Spreaker. You can basically find it everywhere where they have podcasts. And it's a love sex relationship podcast. So they also talk about motherhood, friendships and everything in between. But the focus really is love and relationships and self-love. And I share anecdotes, but I also sometimes have really great guests. I'm actually reshaping the podcast because I want to have more guests, which I call guest co-hosts, um, because it really is a conversation just like we're having and less of a, you know, sell me something, give me something you know, to say for a little snippet. Fantastic. And for those of you watching, if you want to get your copy of Love Trips or you want to check out Tuheri's podcast, we have a link for you. Just go to yourbrilliance.org slash love trips. That's yourbrilliance.org slash L-O-V-E-T-R-I-P-S. Suheri, thank you so much for coming thank on you. the show. And I wondered if you had any last message you would like to leave our viewers with. I'm going to leave you with this because I've been thinking a lot about this for myself. Um, it's so important in a relationship not to give away your, like, the, the, not to give control away to someone. So by, by that, I mean, sometimes in relationships, we let our emotions dictate how we should act and the decisions we should make. And we also allow the, the other person to poke and, and push and especially when someone knows you to, to really like react out of character and in a way that's not for good for our soul. So I feel like the last message for, for your audience is to really know yourself and look at your patterns and realize who needs to stay in your life and who needs to leave, especially when they're taking away your power and don't give your power away to anyone because that's what makes you amazing. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you out there for watching. We hope to see you again soon. Until then, thank let your you. brilliance shine.